Hey everyone and welcome to another tutorial by artincontext.org where we explore various art related topics. My name is Matt and in today's tutorial we will be covering another anatomical structure. We will be looking at how to draw the lungs. Now learning how to draw different anatomical structures is a great way for us to not only enhance our understanding of the body uh, and general knowledge of anatomy but also to help us understand how these features are placed within the body which just uh, kind of provides us with a better understanding of anatomy as a whole and this is really helpful when you are uh, interested in pursuing a more detailed and fundamental understanding of anatomy within your artwork so with that being said let's go through this tutorial on how to draw lungs now lungs are a very unique anatomical structure and they're kind of made up of three main sections and the reason why I say three main sections is we have the left lung which we will actually be drawing on the right so we're gonna see it as a mirrored image um, um, then we have the right lung um, and then we have the trachea which connects into the other bones that are positioned within the throat um, such as the thyroid cartilage um, and the uh, stricoid cartilage. So we want to draw all of these features and we want to kind of see it as this kind of pyramid structure. So lungs are kind of a triangular structure. They have this football like shape and what we first want to do is we're going to first establish a general demarcated area with our pencils in in where we will draw these uh, three main features so on your page and using your pencil uh, start by just drawing a generalized set of circles which are going to determine the placements for each lung and what we want to do is we also want to make sure that we position them uh, next to each other quite symmetrically um, and then we also want to leave a little bit of space in the middle of them where we will draw in the feature that will define uh, the bones that are positioned within the throat or define the structure of the throat. Uh, and what we want to do is we're going to slowly work with our pencils and slowly start to refine the circular shapes into these football-like shapes or triangular pyramid-like shapes. Uh, and this is where we basically work out how the sizing of each lung uh, will be uh, on our page and how they will connect to this more narrow tube-like structure which would be the bones that are uh, positioned in the throat. Now, we wanna make sure that we spend time on each of these features, slowly refining them with our pencils. Uh, and we're gonna take some time during this uh, early stage where we basically work with our pencil and eraser to um, refine all of these features uh, one by one. So we wanna start by the throats and this is where we're gonna basically start uh, shaping the various bone structures within the throat, um, such as the thyroid cartilage, um, the, the chrysoid cartilage, the trachea, and start to work out how this slowly transitions into the features uh, that disperse into both the left and right lung. Now with the throat structure or these bones in the throat structure, especially the chrysoid cartilage, we'll find that it creates these um, or what we will see uh, is a set of ridged bones that run parallel all the way down the bone structure or the throat structure um, all the way through to the what is called the upper lobes um, that connect into the lungs. And these are going to slowly branch out into these um, branch-like features which are called the bronchioles. Now this is why it's nice to have a diagrammatical drawing because we want to understand various features and how they connect into one another. So what we are doing here is we're basically drawing a cross section of the lungs which is revealing the insides um, the inside features that are present within the lungs and this is where we see how the um, left primary bronchus as well as the right primary bronchus connect to the upper lobe um, and kind of define how these upper lobe uh, bronchus as well as the lower lobe bronchus um, kind of flow into these different sections of the lungs. So making sure you do have some diagrammatical representation of the lungs is just going to assist you a little bit more effectively in how you place um, and scale these different features. So again, we also want to think about the mirrored or symmetrical nature of each lung. We really want to make sure that both these lungs are the same size and that they kind of connect to this central tube structure, uh, which are all the bones 
uh, that would be present in the throat and how that kind of works in a vertical direction uh, extending upward beyond both the lungs. So slowly taking your time with your pencil, this process and this stage of the drawing is simply about working out the details one by one uh, in each of these features. Uh, we really want to make sure that we work from the throat downward and then we will transition into drawing these um, uh, features that are present in the lungs such as the branch-like structures which can be defined as the upper low bronchus, lower low bronchus and so on and so on. Now because we're drawing a cross section of the lungs it's really nice for us to see how how the lungs are kind of separated in these upper and lower sections which is going to assist us in understanding the placement of these features so basically the lungs have a upper middle and lower lobe you will see that in any diagrammatical description of the lungs um, or image um, of the lungs we will see that these lower lobes middle lobes and upper lobes are clearly defined in terms of scale and how large and small they are um, in relation to the larger structure of each each lung and what's nice is this basically compartmentalizes uh, the um, lungs and allows us to understand how the bronchioles um, or bronchus features kind of branch into these various lobes and how uh, large and small they should be placed. So as we continue this drawing we want to think about how we can kind of uh, create these partitions with some line work that define the upper, lower and middle lobe. Now again because we're looking at this cross section in a mirrored image uh, the lung on the right within our drawing is actually the left lung um, and vice versa the lung on the left is actually the right lung so as we continue with this drawing process kind of slowly working in with our pencils the details of these three main sections from the throat area or the bones within the throat and how they transition into the lungs we can actually start drawing in these lines that define the upper middle and lower lobes we can also start working in these branch like structures and making sure that we use some good uh, pencil line work to define the main um, branch like structure so again the branch structures that we are seeing here are the upper lobe bronchus and the lower lobe bronchus and these are present in both the left and right lung and what we want to do is we basically want to make sure that the uh, upper lobe bronchus and lower lobe bronchus kind of stems outwardly from these two main pipes or these two main uh, tubes which are called the right primary bronchus and the left primary bronchus which is kind of similar to the trachea structure uh, or bone like structure that uh, diverges into two sections which slowly obviously merges into these two um, uh, branch like features in both the left and right lung. So this primary right bronchus or the right primary bronchus rather um, and the left primary bronchus are the two main sections that merge into the uh, trachea which eventually goes into the chrysoid cartilage and the thyroid cartilage. Now again make sure you just spend time on looking at a diagrammatical uh, drawing of a pair of lungs and kind of slowly working in uh, these details with your pencil and eraser. You should spend some time simply working on the overall shape then what you want to do is spend some time refining the shape and slowly working in these details with a light pencil sketch. We can um, first establish all these features with our pencil before we move on to adding any. Now as we spend time on a light pencil sketch slowly uh, refining the shape making sure all these features are drawn in, um, two main things we really want to focus on are the lower and upper uh, bronchus and these are those two main um, tree-like bronchus structures that uh, kind of um, disperse within the left and right lung making sure that we create this accurate representation of the dispersion of these uh, various little branches um, between the upper section and the lower section of both the right and left lung uh, is really important so we really want to make sure that we spend time on drawing those branches in um, before we start enhancing them and refining them with some darker pencil details uh, another set of features we want to kind of pay attention to are the lobes and again because we are drawing a cross section of the lungs we want to kind of represent these lobes with some line work that kind of creates these partitions or divisions um, or segments within both the left and right lung now we will also find that obviously due to the cross section uh, nature of this drawing uh, the branch like structures the bronchus or the bronchioles will obviously be kind of placed on top 
of these uh, segments that define the upper, middle, and lower lobes within the lungs. So we also want to make sure that we are re representing these, these details with a light pencil sketch first because it's going to make it easier when we move on to refining and enhancing these details with darker pencil marks um, in terms of layering these details. We want to make sure that the branch-like structures, the bronchioles, the uh, bronchus, um, details or features in both the left and right lungs are kind of placed on top of uh, the lobes or at least layered on top of the lobes in terms of how it is visually represented um, within our lungs drawing. Now just make sure you spend your time on this light sketch process, make sure you really capture all the necessary details and make sure that you also place them in their correct uh, uh, positions within the lungs, make sure that the scale uh, is obviously um, accurate and then we can start transitioning into using a darker pencil to uh, slowly enhance this drawing um, with some shading uh, to give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional uh, quality. Now once we have this light pencil sketch we can start transitioning into using a darker pencil and I would suggest something a little bit softer, some, something like a 3B or between a 3B and a 6B pencil and this is where we again gonna start from the top feature uh, all the way from the thyroid cartilage and work our way down into both the lungs. Uh, the intention here at this point is to slowly integrate some shading to give more three-dimensionality to these structures. Now when we're drawing lungs obviously we are drawing this um, hidden uh, component that often exists within the body but the way in which we're going to represent it as a three-dimensional structure is by the utilization of shading and this is where we start to think about the anatomical structure and composition of these various features so what we want to do is we don't want to work in too much dark pencil shading because we're actually going to start working with a ballpoint pen uh, in terms of really enhancing these features with some darker shading now the reason why we'll use ballpoint pen um, is because it works very similar to a pencil uh, in that the ink comes out quite sparingly so we have a lot of autonomy in terms of our mark making process and how light and dark uh, we can establish different tonal values now Again, make sure that once your pencil sketch um, has kind of been completed in terms of working out the uh, overall scale of these features, making sure all the features are drawn in, you can then go over all these features one last time with a darker pencil just to make sure that they are refined, that they're actually drawn in, uh, that they're clearly um, established <clears throat> and that they are quite uh, clear in terms of working some pen marks in um, and that we don't kind of get lost and need to redraw them in. Now spend some time on that pencil sketch before we transition into using our pen uh, for this last step where we really enhance all these features slowly working from the top of the throat section into both the uh, left and right uh, lung. Now once we have done that we're going to start working with our pen and again we're going to start at the top of the drawing and slowly work our way down. So when we work in shading uh, to emphasize features it's really important especially in the context of anatomical drawings to consider the textural quality um, of these different features. So what we are working with uh, predominantly is this combination of muscle as well as fiber bone structures. So making sure that we have some sort of idea of the surface and textural qualities of these features um, as we proceed with our shading process is going to just help us um, have a little bit more of an effective um, approach uh, when defining these features. Um, obviously in the case of a drawing there's many ways to define these features through, through the use of shading. So for instance as we start from the throat section and kind of work in some details with our pen we want to really consider how shading is going to be used to emphasize these different features. So for instance, as we kind of start from the top and work in some shading uh, into the bone structures, we want to think about the fact that a bone structure is quite hard and therefore capable of reflecting some light off of its surface. So the way in which we represent this is by utilizing not only just shading, but strategically allowing some negative space to be present within the bone structure, um, and that's going to function as a highlight. So this is what we want to think of. If the bone structure is quite hard um, in terms of its surface being uh, capable of reflecting light, uh, we want to be able to represent 
represent that quality within our drawing. Um, so a strategic way we can do this, not only in terms of creating depth and three dimensionality, uh, but also how do we capture this quality of a highlight is by the utilization of negative space. So what we can do for all of these little trachea bones that run down the throat structure uh, into the lungs is that we can kind of shade from the outer edges and leave a little bit of negative space running or in the middle of each of those little bone rings that run down the throat uh, in order to represent that highlight quality. Now the same can be said for the larger bone all the way at the top, the thyroid cartilage and the reason being uh, is that again because bones are quite harsh and sharp in terms of their structure they're going to create these more distinct um, uh, variations in tonal value uh, so what we can do is we can actually shade in one side of the thyroid cartilage a little bit more darker than the other side in order to define that a uh, very sharp and harsh ridge that runs um, through the center of the thyroid cartilage um, so as you proceed with your pen shading process remember two things for one don't necessarily draw too hard too fast you don't need to apply too much pressure to the pen um, again we can kind of build up these layers um, through light sketching and kind of darken them if need be um, or build up these layers until we have achieved the tonal value we're happy with uh, we can also have a scrap piece of paper nearby where we can actually scribble on during the pen shading process and this is just going to help us um, get rid of any excess build up of ink in the pen um, throughout the drawing process so we don't make any silly mistakes um, the other thing is with these bone structures while we kind of start and spend some time on the bone structure and slowly uh, merge into the lungs we really want to consider that the bone is quite a um, hard and almost glassy like surface or at least capable of reflecting light so we can describe this quality by the use of negative space and making sure that not only do we shade uh, in these features these bone like features um, but that we leave little negative spaces um, in certain parts of these bone like features to define this idea of a highlight being reflected off of the surface of those bone features now another thing we can do is with the trachea the bones are kind of like rings that run down this throat section what we can do is actually darken the uh, muscular tube structure beneath the surface of those rings or that set of rings um, and that's going to also bring out these bone structures a little more creating a distinction uh, in tonal value between the muscular or tube like structure beneath the bones um, in comparison to the bones themselves so try to really consider consider the anatomical um, textural quality of these features as you proceed with your pen shading process and as we kind of work our way down from the bone structures in the throat all the way to the lungs. Now the, these left and right trachea bones um, <clears throat> and how they kind of establish these rings along the tube like structure are going to continue all the way into the left and right primary bronchus which inevitably will flow into the bronchioles which are the uh, branch like structures that stem from the left and right bronchus. Now again because we're drawing a mirrored cross section image of the lungs we're going to spend some time on the left lung which is positioned on the right side of our page so we don't want to get confused try to just think of it as the lungs being switched over to avoid confusion but we'll be spending time on the right side of the page which is the left lung now what we can start to do is focus our attention now onto the branch like structures the bronchus or the bronchioles uh, within the lungs now again because we're drawing a cross section we are making sure that we are layering these features which means we first want to focus on drawing in the bronchus and its various bronchioles by doing this we can pay attention to the uh, top layer of features which are these bronchioles uh, which will be placed on top of the uh, lower middle and upper lobes so using your pen again first consider what these features are made of these little tube like structures are actually made up of muscle so they tend to be quite smooth and the way in which we can represent this is very similar to how we defined um, the bone like structure but this time what we want to do is we want to focus on these more smaller moments of gradients that kind of define the overall structure um, or 
a slight transition in shadow formation that runs along the outlines of these branches. So the intention here is to basically outline these features with your pen, but then slowly shade uh, from the outline into the structure, creating these very small transitions or gradients from dark to light. And this is going to give this a little feature a little bit more of a three-dimensional quality. So again, just to repeat, the intention with giving these details or these branches a little bit more of a three-dimensional quality is to not shade the entire thing but rather to create a gradient that forms from the outline uh, which should be dark and slowly becomes lighter as we come onto the inside or uh, middle sections of each of these little branches. So this is going to take some time but again the idea here is to keep these branches slightly light so that when we add in some shading to the surrounding features we create a little bit of depth between um, these features on top that are layered on top and the lobes which will be placed behind uh, these tube like structures or these little branchy tube structures. Um, so just make sure you take your time with your pen shading process. If you do feel fatigued during the drawing process, remember to take a break. It's always good to take a break and then come back to the drawing with a little bit more of a refreshed mindset and that way you don't make any silly mistakes. Uh, when drawing anatomy, it can get really tiring. So it's really important to learn how to take breaks as opposed to just quitting or stopping the drawing. Now, remember, again, we really just want to take our time outlining these branches with our pen and slowly creating these little shaded in gradients that form from the outline of the branch into the larger surface area or the inside section of the um, feature. Now this we're going to continue until we have completed um, the upper low bronchus area and its upper bronchioles as well as the lower larger branch area, um, the lower lobe bronchus and its various bronchioles that extend into the um, lower lobe. Uh, so just take your time, remember that we're trying to create gradients, uh, these kinds of gradients and shadow formations um, we develop through or integrate through the utilization of our shading. Remember to keep your scrap paper nearby for your pen shading process in order to uh, rid any excess ink buildup within the pen um, and then simply complete the branch like structures before moving on to the surrounding features. Now as we continue shading in the branches and we slowly work our way from the top section to the lower section we can start playing around with uh, darkening some areas and lightening some areas. However that being said we don't want to make the branches too dark uh, and the reason being is we want to maintain that layering effect uh, once we have completed the entire bronchus structure uh, between the upper and lower low bronchus and their various bronchioles um, that extend into the upper and lower section of the um, left lung, we will still want to make sure that they remained lighter uh, in comparison to that of the surrounding features. And this is just going to create that quality of depth and just further emphasize the three-dimensional nature of the drawing uh, so the drawing doesn't fall flat. Now as we continue with this process of shading in the edges and outlines of the bronchus and its various bronchioles and slowly working in these gradients into the um, larger surface area in the center of each branch. Uh, we'll start to see um, that the drawing already is starting to become a little bit more realistic in terms of three-dimensionality and the structures having a little bit more form to them. Uh, once we have continued and kind of completed uh, the entire branch structure we can start moving on to the surrounding features and this includes starting with the basic outline of the various lobes so what we can actually start doing is we can actually start outlining from the top section or the top lobe of the uh, um, left lung and kind of outline the entire thing um, from there what we can actually start doing is already start shading in the top section of the left lung where the outer layer um, can kind of be darkened to define the muscular exterior that kind of encases the inner features such as the bronchial and so on now now again in terms of thinking about the textural quality of these features um, the lobes of the lung tend to be quite muscular in nature which means they're filled with 
blood. However, when we're working uh, these types of qualities within a drawing, uh, especially a monochromatic drawing, what we want to be conscious of is how do we uh, define the differences through the use of tonal variation. And this is where we start to pay attention between the difference or the distinction of the features made uh, clear by the use of dark and light marks. Now, now what is unique to these organ-like structures within the body, they tend to be filled with blood, which kind of gives them a singular coloration throughout the entire structure. And this is what we want to think about in terms of how we represent um, the surrounding features or at least the uh, features placed underneath these bronchial structures. Uh, so what we're going to do in terms of creating a consistent coloration within these various muscle groups or um, segments within the lung, such as the upper lobe and the lower lobe, we want to play around with various tonal values. So what I mean by tonal values is if we are coloring really dark, that is one tonal value. If we're coloring really light, that is another tonal value. What we want to do is want to use a spectrum between darker and lighter marks to kind of create distinctions within these features. Um, so Again, we're going to use our ballpoint pens very similar to how we would use a pencil in the sense that we're going to shade in these different features uh, in different um, tonal values or different colors. And this is where we're going to spend a really good portion of time thinking about how to represent these features by the use of different um, shading uh, tones. So in terms of um, understanding how these features are defined within a diagrammatical um, image, we can obviously look at a few uh, reference images um, if you have been working with one consider how the reference image kind of defines these features and intentionally be quite observational I think this is where observational skills uh, really become key for this kind of uh, mark making process where we pay attention to how the diagrammatical references um, represent these various features uh, in a um, lungs drawing and what we want to do is we want to kind of um approach our drawing process with the same idea of integrating these various tonal values to define various features within the lungs um, and create a distinction between them um, in terms of lighter and darker shading marks. Now again what we're going to do is we're going to try and maintain a consistency uh, within these various segments in the lungs in terms of our shading. So this means our shading technically will be slightly more flat in the sense that if we have a singular section such as the superior lobe which is placed on the uh, top section of the left lung we can be quite consistent in terms of coloring uh, the entire uh, feature with the same uh, tonal range um, so for instance what we can do is we want to start from the top of the lungs and slowly work our way around a really good suggestion would be at this point to kind of outline the pencil marks with your pen to clearly define uh, these segments uh, that way you don't mistakenly uh, shade over to segments um, accidentally with the same sort of tonal range. Now there's this process in drawing called the checkerboard effect and the idea is to kind of create a checkerboard uh, distinction in terms of shading and coloration to create a variety between um, different features. So for instance, something unique like a, a pair of lungs, in order to create a distinction when features are so closely placed together, you want to kind of think about uh, coloring one feature in super dark and then the, the, the feature next to it a little bit lighter and then the feature next to it super dark. Uh, in terms of using a monochromatic method of uh, shading, obviously we're working with a very specific range of tonal values. So having this checkerboard effect in mind as you color one feature then move on to the next and kind of uh, give it a different tonal range um, is a really effective way in producing this idea or this quality this visual quality of difference uh, in features and how they are represented through a monochromatic format of shading. So again, what we're going to do with our ballpoint pens is simply take our time working in 
um, shading in these various features allow yourself to work around the entire structure um, and as you start coming into the features that are kind of closely knitted towards the bronchial or maybe position underneath the bronchial you can start lighting those features another good suggestion is to kind of darken the outer wall or the outer lining that forms around the entire lung structure and the reason why we can do this is it's a great starting point in terms of creating a darkened feature and from there allowing that to be the reference point in terms of which feature should be lighter now it's also nice for us to kind of bring in a uh, some darkened features from the outer lining around the lungs and slowly lighten these features as we come to the central area uh, where the lobes would technically be colored in underneath the bronchioles um, allowing for the darkened outline of the bronchioles to pop a little bit more and then creating that depth or that distinction between the features so we really want to think about how do we create depth how do we utilize our shading in order to create distinctions how do we think about our tonal range and what tonal range range is available to us through the use of pen shading um, and drawing a lungs or a pair of lungs in a single uh, colored medium. So as we proceed with this process of just shading in these different features and these different layers represented in our lungs uh, one at a time, we'll slowly start to see how the lung drawing uh, becomes a little bit more realistic. What we can also do as just an additional way to give more three-dimensionality to the structure is give some sort of gradient shift uh, in the moments where the lungs have these partitions between the various lobes. So for instance, where we have used line work to define these different segments, we can slowly add in some gradient shifts um, between these lines to kind of give a little bit more uh, form and structure and three-dimensionality between these different sections. This process we're going to continue with until uh, we have completed in the entire lung. Uh, something also to bear in mind as we proceed with the shading process is that as we get to the lower lobe section and we kind of start to uh, integrate shading into the more um, densely segmented areas with features such as the lingula and inferior border um, start to kind of be defined through these segmented lines we can actually start to darken them and this is where that checkerboard um, effect really plays a role where we can actually darken layers one at a time slowly making them darker as we get to the lower section of the lung uh, keeping that lower section a little bit darker than the upper section is also a great way to once again uh, bring a lot of depth and attention to the unique and beautiful striking visual quality of the bronze uh, or the bronchus ultimately making the drawing a little bit more nuanced and unique um, and maintaining some sort of realistic uh, quality and three-dimensionality in the structure as a whole now we can continue with the shading process until we have completely filled in all the um, segments within the left lung and once we have satisfactorily uh, completed one lung we can slowly shift our attention to the right lung in which we will proceed with the exact same process as we did uh, for the left uh, and again this process is going to be the exact same we're going to start with the bronchioles we're going to make sure we take our time slowly working on those features refining them uh, through the outlining with our ballpoint pen and creating this gradient that kind of shifts into the uh, middle section of each branch giving it a little bit more of a three-dimensional quality and then from there we will continue to proceed by shading in the surrounding features making sure that we keep that checkerboard effect um, or process of shading in our heads in terms of uh, integrating various tonal values to the different features um, in order to create a distinction between these features so our drawing doesn't fall flat but otherwise guys this is the general process of how to draw lungs uh, some major key takeaways to remember is that number one you really want to make sure you understand the fundamental shapes of these three main uh, features from the throat bone structures flowing into the two lungs um, number two we want, we want to understand how these uh, inner features of the lungs kind of uh, form through these various segments and in terms of scale how the bronchioles or the larger bronchus structure are positioned in the upper and lower lower lobes of the lungs and then number three we want to understand how to effectively use our shading to not only emphasize these features but to bring three-dimensionality to them to create tonal ranges in order to create a distinction between these features and ultimately to create depth through features that are layered um, on top of one another. 
But when it does come to anatomy style drawings, the main thing to take away is patience. We really just want to patiently work out the form and shape through a pencil sketch. Make sure we got these features um, drawn in correctly and then from there we can proceed to a more refined um, and enhanced process of integrating pen shading uh, for more um, three-dimensional and contrasted drawing. I hope this was really helpful. I hope you have um, some tips and ideas and principles to think about and take away from this drawing process um, and to integrate it into your own drawing process. If you did like this video, please drop a like and subscribe. This helps us a lot. Um, this is a anatomy style drawing that forms part of a larger series of drawings or anatomy style drawings. Um, and we will be covering a couple more anatomy style drawings in the future. Um, if you do like anatomy style drawings, please let us know um, and then we'll definitely make sure to cover some more topics. Otherwise guys, thanks again um, and until next time, peace. Cheers.